Hey guys, I'm John Fryer. Welcome to Fryer Funds and welcome to my kitchen. As always, starting this off, saying this is not financial advice, this is not legal advice, consult your own advisors and make your own decisions. With that said, I know I haven't made a video in quite a while. It turns out this isn't really my, uh, my taste. I don't really like making these videos that much. Um, so I don't know how many more videos in the future I'll end up making, but I did want to put this one out to just kind of go over what we've seen and what I kind of foresee in this next year because it's going to be uh, kind of interesting. So first, I do want to go over. Um, remember, we started this account with $15,000 last year, started investing uh, April 20th, 420, and we're up to 31000 now, which is all-time high. Which is nice, and for the most part, I've left it alone. I've done a couple of trades since my last video, but for the most part, this was a passive, just buy the stocks last year, and not a whole lot of trades, mostly just changing things in and out over the weekend. And the reason I did that was to kind of show you don't have to spend full time on this to get good returns. Yes, there have been other YouTubers out there that have done massive option trades that have turned like 5,000 into $200,000 and all, all this other stuff, which is great, but they're working on it essentially full time. This was just a passive portfolio I set up to just kind of see how it was done. So if you'd like to see how that was done, go ahead and watch my old videos. Granted that portfolio today obviously isn't the same because we're coming up on a year later, but you can get the idea of how the portfolio was set up to set up your own new one. But with that said, I wanted to kind of go over what I'm seeing for the rest of this year and um, kind of talk about a few things and go from there. So first, this is the NASDAQ. Um, which is where we're going to focus most of our attention right now. Uh, this is the course over basically the last year with the low March 23rd and the high a few weeks ago on March 16th. So what, I'm, what I've been thinking for the last little while, and it turns out it's kind of working in the way I thought, so I think I'm going to expand on the idea. Last year, there were a lot of people that got into stock investing or trading more than ever before and trading has been more um, prevalent than ever before rather than buy and hold. So what's happening now is tax season is upon us. So everyone is getting tax forms for their last year of investing and trading. And a lot of people, I presume, didn't really count on how much this would impact their taxes and how much they would owe. So I was kind of thinking that when tax season came around, there would be a pretty good sell-off as they have to raise the money to go ahead and pay their taxes. Well, this top right here in the NASDAQ, which is where a lot of people like to trade, was on March 6, or March, um, February 16th. And sure enough, that was the deadline for a lot of investment paperwork or documents to come through from Robinhood, from Webull, from E-Trade. Most documents, they're deadline to get to the investors from the broker was February 16th and that was the top day that night we got our tax forms and the market's been pretty much selling off since or at least the Nasdaq has it's bounced back this last week for some other reasons which we'll get into but I want to continue with this thought so not just February 16th another important day if you have complex tax situations your documents are due March 16th which is this coming Tuesday. I haven't received all my tax forms yet, specifically in Robinhood. I just got a revised tax form from E-Trade, um, so I haven't done my taxes yet. But there are a lot of other people that also haven't gotten all their tax forms and haven't done their taxes yet, that they'll get their forms this coming Tuesday. When they go to do their taxes, at this point, I'm expecting even more of a sell-off and a similar situation that we've seen up here. And what we've seen up here, if I can zoom in, is this is the day we got the forms. This was the rest of that week. We did have a little bit of a sell-off. Then the weekend happened and everyone did their taxes. And then this is Monday's candle. And Monday sold off really hard after that weekend that a lot of people got their tax forms. I'm fully, fully expecting that same thing to play out this next week. So tax forms will come on Tuesday, which means we'll have a little bit of sell-off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then everyone will do their taxes over the weekend, everyone else. And then next Monday, the, what day would that be? Um, the 22nd, we'll have a massive sell-off again in the NASDAQ and possibly, uh, possibly the others too. But the NASDAQ is what gets hit the hardest by the uh, retail traders here. 
But with that said, there's something else coming into play now as tax season started, which is slightly different than before. Before, we were getting $600 stimulus checks, and that happened in more so January leading up to this. So we had a massive run up from those $600 stimulus checks, then tax forms came in and we've sold off with a little bit of a bounce. Well, this time we're just starting to see our $1,400 stimulus checks, which is over double the 600 we got before. However, if you're making over 150,000 for a couple or 80,000 for a single or something like that, you're not gonna see um, the stimulus check. However, I believe that still it's 90 some odd percent of retail traders are going to get this stimulus check and put it into the market. And we've already seen st some stimulus checks clear here on Saturday. And sure enough, today, Bitcoin crossed 60,000 for the first time. So it's had a run up just today. So here's kind of what I'm looking at. Monday, the 15th here in two days, we're going to have a massive gap up in the NASDAQ. Everyone that got their stimulus checks are going to put it in. Everyone anticipating their, their stimulus checks are going to put it in. And everyone expecting those with stimulus checks to put their stimulus checks in are going to go in. So Monday, I'm expecting a gap up with a strong day come Monday. Then Tuesday, tax, tax forms come in. Depending on what time they come in, we could see the sell-off start Tuesday. If they don't come in until after the market closes, I expect another good green day on Tuesday, although probably not as good as Monday. Then Wednesday comes. Well, again, it's going to depend on when those tax forms come in. If they come in before market Tuesday, I'm expecting the sell-off to start on Tuesday. If they come in after market, but before the evening really starts, so people, some people have time to look at their taxes, I'm expecting Wednesday to be a decent little sell-off. If it comes late Tuesday night, so people don't really see it till they wake up Wednesday, or maybe if they go to bed really late Tuesday night, um, and of course this all depends on your time zone too, then we may just see a flat day Wednesday and people won't really start looking at their taxes till Wednesday, Wednesday night. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, those three days will probably be a sell-off towards the end of the week. Over the weekend again, they'll do their taxes, see that they owe a lot more than they were expecting, and we'll have a massive sell-off on, on the 22nd here in the NASDAQ. That's what I'm seeing this next little week. Now, to counter the sell-off is going to be more and more stimulus checks. And there are people, such as myself, we knew taxes were coming. We've been investors for a long time. Or even if you're a new investor and you've just done the research or whatever and you know taxes are going to be killer, you've put the cash for your taxes aside. You've probably overshot. I'm hoping I've overshot at least. So you have, you'll have some money after you do taxes to go buy on these dips. Plus, we have stimulus checks coming in. So I expect a lot of volatility as well. So Monday, March 22nd, will be a massive sell-off after a lot of taxes are done over the weekend, followed by an uproar or a rip-up, and a lot of volatility going in until all the taxes are kind of flushed through the system, the latest of April 15th, but I think it'll all kind of settle before then because people will do their taxes, and even if they don't pay it until April 15th, they'll already know what they owe, they'll just set that aside and then they have their stimulus check and whatever afterward. So a couple key levels here. First off, back here in September, September 2nd, we seen this was the top of the market right then, and it was a little bit stronger down here. Then we had the massive sell-off because this was overinflated, followed by run-up, back down, whatever, right? I mean, we've seen some serious volatility, and there are various reasons that I'm not going to talk about because if you were in the market at the time, you kind of have an idea, and they don't play into effect here other than stimulus checks. But what is important are these levels, this level right here, about $300. For This is the QQQ, the ETF that follows the NASDAQ. About $300. That was the high back in September. It almost hit that again during the next run-up in uh, mid-October before the sell-off. Almost hit it again with a massive spike up in uh, early November until it finally broke out after the election, because the election was a big reason that uh, for a lot of this volatility. After the election, everyone knew who won the election. Well, at least all the investors that cared. Um, they no longer wondered who was actually going to win the initial election anyway. there's I'm not going to get into the controversy. Anyway, so at that point, investors started piling in more, came up and retested that 300 line, 
and then shot up afterward with the stimulus checks, uh, the vaccine, all this other news. Now, yes, we've had other little dips. I mean, it's never a straight line one way or the other. It's always, always up and down a little at a more micro level. But we've been running up. We got the stimulus checks and everything else. And then, sure enough, February 16th, when tax documents came in, that's when we started to see the sell-off. Now, yes, everything was kind of overinflated anyway, but people were still buying. And then, sure enough, February 16th. Now, of course, that's not the only reason. Not everyone has this situation. Like I said, I've already set, the si set aside the money. I did quite a while ago, well before uh, February 16th. And there are some that are in margin that are just trying to clean it up. We've overinflated, yada, yada. Anyway, so we had the sell-off. And sure enough, again, about that $300 mark. This seems to be a very important resistance and ceiling line for the NASDAQ. So when we go up on this coming Monday, after the stimulus checks rip or uh, come in, the, well, the market will rip up, possibly on Tuesday, if we don't get the tax documents until uh, Tuesday night, we may see a new all-time high, or at least come really awfully close to it, close to it before we start selling off again and into Monday this 22nd, we'll probably hit this 300 line, possibly even go down further. Um, it's hard to exactly say. Then once that happens, stimulus checks are all coming in, all the taxes are paid. We should be in the clear for a little while until probably late May. And the reason I say late May is by then, a vast majority of people will be vaccinated and there'll be this good news of the stock market's going to do great because the economy's opening, people are going to start traveling, and that's all great, fine, and dandy for the businesses. But what happens now is all these people that are trading and investing are going to go outside. They're going to go travel. They're going to stop sitting at their computer. And so they're not going to see the dips necessarily. Now, that's not to say everyone is, but there'll be a lot less participation in the market this summer than last year for sure. With that comes another major catalyst this year, and that's retirees. Now, we've already started the big boom of baby boomers retiring for the year. I had already kind of heard this through the grapevine, but then my uncle is one of them that very much matches the description. He was thinking about retiring last year. Then COVID happened. So what happened? One, he saw his, he saw his retirement during the sell-off drop drastically. He went from having to go into the office to working from home and he was planning on retiring because he wanted to be able to travel and then you can't. So what did he do? Well, he continued to work, put more money into his 401k for his retirement, worked from home so he didn't have to go into the office. So it kind of felt like a weird retirement and wasn't traveling because he couldn't travel anyway. Well, now all of this is over. Vaccinations here, basically. He plans on retiring here really soon like. And so do a lot of other people that wanted to retire last year. Now, yes, there were some that were forced to retire because they lost their job as it wasn't a type of job they could work from home. But I will say that those either became market participants or they never were in the first place in a lot of ways anyway because they didn't make enough or didn't contribute to their 401k or whatever. So you've got these baby boomers that were going to retire either towards the end of 2019 or last year in 2020 that didn't. Even big guys. Um, Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, he plans on retiring this year. That's kind of crazy to think. Bob Iger, who was the CEO of Disney, had retired February 25th, 2020, right as the pandemic was kind of starting. Really good time and really bad time. So pandemic hit, everything shut down. Disney was in a lot of trouble. So what did they do? They called up Bob and was like, hey, Bob, um, we know you just retired. We just put in this new CEO and this new CEO is great, but he's only been here, you know, a week or a month or whatever this was. And yeah, he's been with the company for a long time, but not in the CEO overall. Um, basically, hey, Bob, um, okay, cool. I thought that was funny. Anyway, so Bob came back <laughs> with Disney and Disney's at an all-time high again, and Disney's rocking, and so he's going to retire later this year. So as a lot of baby boomers retire this year, they've just seen their retirement skyrocket. We're at all-time highs in the stock market. They're going to be worried about losing it and funding their retirement. 
So they're going to move in, move into fixed income, which means they're going to try to buy bonds, which for various reasons, that's kind of a bad idea, but we'll get into that. They're probably going to want to buy gold because yes, the new generation, my generation, we like Bitcoin for the most part. Very few of us like gold. So that's why gold's kind of been selling off. But the older generation, especially those retiring, even if they kind of like the idea of Bitcoin and do believe in it, they're not going to trust their retirement in Bitcoin. They might buy a little here and there, but they're going to trust gold more so. So gold's going to take off. Bonds could take off. The only catalyst and what I wanted to talk about with bonds is, is bonds go up when interest rates go down. Interest rates have been steadily generally going down since the mid 80s. So bonds have been a great investment over the last 40, 50 years because interest rates just go down. Back in the mid 80s or early 80s, they were interest rates were in the mid teens, I believe. It, it was crazy high. Well, the inverse of the fact happens when interest rates go up. Now, yes, again, at the micro level, interest rates go up and down all the time. But um, at this point, we're pretty much as low as we can get with interest rates. And they're going to have to raise interest rates with all this money they've just printed. And as the economy and everything comes back, they're going to have to raise interest rates. Now, the Fed has said they're not going to raise interest rates until next year at the earliest, possibly to 2024 is possibly the latest. They're not even thinking about thinking about raising rates. But a lot of people are kind of betting against that because they expect a lot of inflation. One inflation hedge is gold. Either way, they will have to raise rates over the next coming years, um, whether it's this year or in 2024. At some point, they will have to raise rates. And when they do, bonds drop off. So investing in bonds, if you're looking for growth, is a really bad idea because as they raise interest rates, bonds go down. Because the yield change, I'm not going to get into how that works. But yeah, bonds go down when interest rates go up. So buying bonds isn't the greatest because it's going to go down and your payout's going to be the same. Interest rates have already come up to about 1.5 for the 10 year, which isn't too bad. But really before the pandemic, not long before that, we've seen 3% interest rates. So we still have a long ways to go before we get to a, a higher threshold. Dividend stocks, uh, a lot of them do yield over 3%, 3 to 5% is a good range. A couple are higher than that. A couple of REITs are higher than that. But those are kind of dangerous if bond yield rates go up because if you are in a stock that yields 3% and it's probably safe, but then you have this bond doing 2.5% and it is safe, or at least it's safe assuming you uh, believe the US government isn't going away or the dollar's not going away, they're gonna switch out of the dividend bonds or dividend stocks to go over to bonds. At least that's what my thought of how you would move your money if you're looking for fixed income. So I'm a little worried about that. And as they raise interest rates, tech companies tend to sell off. That's what they're contributing a lot of this sell off to is interest rates. Not necessarily that they're high because they're still not high, but it's the velocity at which they've come up to 1.5% because it wasn't that long ago, like two, three weeks ago, interest rates were, I think it was like 0.6 before this all kind of started. So that's what a lot of the media talks about is because the interest rates are going up quickly, tech stocks and such are selling off, which is part of it, but not the whole story. I think taxes have a lot to do with it as well. Um, and yes, retail investors don't make the mass movements, but they make a lot of the micro movements and micro movements add up over time. So when you see a bottom like this, 300, this is probably where a lot of the big money, the institutional investors come in or leave in, in the opposite direction. All these little moves up and down are the retail investors these days. At least that's, that's how I believe it. it's basically moving. So this may be a temporary high. We might see this this next week again as we rip up on Monday, maybe Tuesday, depending on when those tax documents come in. We're going to go down because of taxes. Then we'll go up as stimulus checks go and come in, or as stimulus checks come in and clear, taxes are paid. Everyone's looking forward to the economy. We're going to rip up until late May when a lot of people are um, vaccinated and a lot of the retail traders, sure, they'll leave their long-term investments there, but they're going to be excited to go travel. They're going to be excited to go outside. Some will stick around, but the amount of people participating in the market at that point won't be very high. And then you're going to have a massive wave this year of new retirees that are going to change their 401ks to be more safe investments. 
They're going to buy gold. They're going to buy bonds. They're going to retire. Opening up a lot of jobs, which is good. Um, just the only issue is that they're skilled jobs generally that are harder to fill. Um, but they're going to go travel and stuff. So towards the end of this year, it wouldn't surprise me if overall the stock market is technically up for the year, but only just. And we're going to have a lot of volatility between now and the end of May. And then a good little downtrend for a little while until possibly again at this 300, possibly even back to 270, 260. Um, we'll kind of see how that plays out. But that's kind of what I'm looking at for the um, outlook of the rest of this year. Bitcoin plays a little bit of a role. People traveling. We could have another. If we have another um, vaccine resistant COVID strain that everyone worries about. And of course, political tensions could come in and a lot of people are saying the dollar is going to fail there's all this other stuff but that's kind of harder to see at least in the short term we could see hyperinflation but is it going to last more than this year because when you do a year over year compare comparison yes 2021 is going to have massive inflation compared to 2020 but if you compare that to 2019 is it really and as we get into 2022 is it just going to equalize and we're not going to see the mass inflation that a lot of people think We've seen inflation in asset prices, stocks, and real estate, um, and there'll be a crash in those at some point in the future, but I don't know. Anyway, that's all I'm seeing is stocks are going to be volatile. Taxes and stimulus checks are going to uh, probably have the biggest impact on the stock market in the short term, and then towards the latter half of this year, people retiring and market participants leaving is going to make the bigger impact. So that's all I've got. Again, not financial advice, not legal advice. And this is just my outlook, and I just wanted to get it out there. So thanks. Talk to you next time.